time, your question will be answered by the end of his lecture. If not, we have an hour afterwards or a little longer where we can have personal questions asked to Frank and I'll kind of interpret what you say if he can't hear you and then you'll be able to ask the question that you want. So you can write it down. So let's have a wonderful evening and let's welcome Frank Chester. inviting me here, and I want to thank uh, Richard and Kevin for all the work they went to to bring you all here. Uh, I've been a lot of places before, you know, of course, uh, when you do lectures, but um, this is one of the best organized ones I've been to. Wow, cool. From Asia all the way to Europe. This is probably the best organized. Woo So um, I'll present uh, my new findings along with my old findings too, um, and I want all of you to know that uh, this, all of this belongs to you. It doesn't belong to me. I happen to be the one that came along and discovered it. Um, and of course I share everything, I put everything I have on the internet uh, for that reason. And I do that because... Um, if I keep things secret, then there's a chance that there may be negative forces that want it. Okay, and so I keep it secret for them. But the problem is that is, is that it also I keep the secret from the good forces. So if I give it out to the good forces, all the, uh, the negative forces aren't interested. They want things secret. <laughs> so this is what uh, this is why I do this. Uh, you can make any of these things. Uh, uh, for your own to test it out. You're going to see magic tonight. Mm. And this kind of magic, there are two kinds of magic. There's a magic that the person up front can do, but you can't. They can bring the rabbit out of the hat. And usually the hand is uh, quicker than the eye. This is just the opposite. The hand is slower than the eye. And it can be done by anyone, not just me. So, um, I heard um, that you've, a lot of people have had the Flower of Life experience through um, workshops. And so I thought what I'd do is, uh, you know, bring that back into your consciousness. And uh, for people who have never seen a Flower of Life, or the Seed of Life, or the Fruit of Life, or the Tree of Life, um, you'll get to see how that works. So that's what I was going to do here is first draw this on here. And I want to show you the first compass. This is the first compass in the world. Um, it's a twig yeah, that splits off. You just sharpen both ends and make circles. You don't have to adjust it. See, that in Renaissance, they put a thing across here with a screw so it can adjust it. But on the flower of life, you, don't, you just need this. You go down the beach and do this in the sand. You should never need to reset it. It's always the same setting. Okay, so... Um, I'll try to do this kind of quick because I know some of you uh, know all about this, but th th this is magic, uh, what goes on here. If I draw a circle, it's always the same. And I know this seems elementary, but it's magic that you can take that same size and you can put it here and go all the way around and it divides the circle exactly into six. I mean, that, I mean who did this? <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, I couldn't do anything like that. Look at that. That thing is perfect. Every time. So now you've got a circle that's divided into six. So that means that what you can do is you can take where those circles are on the edge, and if you draw the same size circle, not changing your compass, and you draw all of these circles around the middle one. Almost got it. Let's see where this is going to be here. There. And one more here. Now, 
this, if you do this before you go to sleep at night, it will change your dream life. Change your dreams. Now you have six circles around one. Seven. Seven. Okay. So if I decided to add some more, I can put the circles here that will go through the middle of the first one. starting to see there's a flower starting to emerge in the center. There'll be one more. All right. So you have to ask yourself, well, how many circles has he got there? Uh, anybody know? It's kind of hard to count them because, you know. 13? Yeah, 13, because I made one in the middle, then I put six, right? Right. Then I put six more, it's 13. In the world, there's no such form, a three-dimensional form that has 13 sides. Except now. <laughs> this is, no, thank you, this is, the, this is 13 sided, first in the world, I've never seen this before. This came from seven. Well, this is a prime number. This is an uneven number, 13 and 7. So I call this a decatria because uh, deca is 10 and tria is 3. Okay, and so there are people that are working on this form with beehives. Okay, so we're not done because I only have 13. And the flower of life has a couple more. Well, let's see where they are. How many have now? 19. 19. So I added six more, didn't I? There's no such thing in the world a 19-sided form. <laughs> this is the first 19-sided form in the world. It has 19 sides. And you can see that it's not regular. Okay? And that's what we need to work on as individuals in our consciousness, is to get away from everything that's regular. So you're going to ask, well, what, uh, you know, this form has seven sides, um, and this is it. This is the Chetahedron, a lot of bronze. That's it. This is a textured one. Okay, and it's uneven too. But what's amazing about it is that all the surfaces, all seven surfaces, are perfectly equal in surface area. I have 13 pages in this book that was written by Dr. Miller about my work. I don't have anything to do with this, except my work. He's got 13 pages of mathematics. And the mathematics, okay, no one can dispute that this, perf this is the perfect form. 13 pages of mathematics that is a proof that is accurate. Just as accurate as the platonic forms. The cube. All the surfaces are equal in size. Area. The face. So it's just either. So a lot of people can relax now. That, okay, that there's proof. <laughs> okay. So one of the things about the flower life that that I really liked um, was that I was I like to find the earth because in the flower life there's no thirteen there's no there's no uh, three dimensional form using nineteen circles that overlap like that and create a vesica. So there isn't a, a sphere that you can put nineteen circles around. There's not a sphere you can put seven circles around, and there's not a sphere you can put 
13 around. That won't work. Now the Chinese tried, uh, and of course they made a whole bunch of them around here, they just lost count. But it's very beautiful, this uh, dog sort of puts his claw on it, I don't know if you've ever seen it. But anyway, um, I wanted to find out the relationship of this form to Earth. And of course the, f the first thing I, I, I went to is the research that goes on with these seismic studies. They tell you exactly the size of the core, the mantle, and of course the crust. So what I did was I found out uh, the size of the core of the Earth in here. Okay, it looks like this. Mm. <laughs> Same size as my drawing before. I just drilled holes through all the points. See? <laughs> but that red circle right there is the core of the Earth. That has nothing to do with the flower of life or the fruit of life or whatever. So um, this is why the flower of life or the seed of life has never been used in relationship to the earth because it doesn't work. Okay, so I'll go to this. I'm going to show you uh, this is the Chesterhedron. It's called the Chesterhedron because this is an organ, an organization that sits in our heart. This is the heart left ventricle. It's also the right ventricle, but the right ventricle has been pushed off to the side, but it started out the same size. So, you know, yeah, I have to ask yourself, well, what's behind this? I mean, why did this came in in 2000, January? I found this, 2000, January. So how come this has never been in the world before? And if it isn't, if it just came in at 2000, well, where is it? This, this has to have some kind of relationship to something. And also, uh, well, how does it affect me? How does it affect consciousness? Which is what we need to change, okay, is our consciousness now that we're in into the year 2000 plus. So the only way you can find that out is to analyze this, to try to figure out a way to figure out what's going on. And so what I'm interested in is, first, what's inside? What's inside this thing? So first off, I'll show you where the form comes from. The form comes from, if I take this top off, you know, I'm afraid that people are not going to be able to see this, but, um, okay, I'll take it off. Here it is, here's coming off. Everybody sees that, right? See where that came from? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's still a part there I'm going to hold. So where this comes from is it comes from a pentagram. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. It's a pentagram. It's a five-pointed star, which represents the human being. <laughs> two arms, two legs, and a head. <laughs> so there it is. It's a pentagram. Now that, that's amazing that's a pentagram. So all it has done is I've enfolded it like this, okay, and there it is with just three. There it is with four, but there it is with just three. Octahedron. Now, we've got the bottom part here to deal with. Now the bottom part, I'm going to take off, and there it is. It's coming from a tetrahedron. It's coming from a tetrahedron. This is known as fire. There are four elements that we study, earth, water, air, and fire. This is fire. But in our form, it's not fire, it's warmth. So what happens is this is why it becomes warm, because it opens up. And it opens up like that to receive the five-pointed star that's enfolded to make seven equal surface areas perfect. And what's left? A skeleton. This is almost what we call scaffolding in a building. So I'm getting closer. I know that it's coming from a, a star, and it's also coming from a triangle. But now, what's inside this? I need to find out what's inside this. So one of the things that I did to try to find out what's inside it was this. And I found there was another new form in it. 
This little green guy in here has never been seen before either. Everything I'm showing you, you can do. Here it is in points only. Points. These are edges. Edges. See, there's no edges on this, see? There's only points. So if you connect all the points, you also have something else going on here. You got another shape that's going on. So we're going to get try to find out where this is and what it's about. And I showed you that the Decatria, the little 13-sided guy, he is what's called a dual. So this form fits in the chestahedron and it also fits around the chestahedron. Oh, here it is. Inside the chestahedron, there's this. Mm -hmm. And outside the chestahedron, there's this, bigger. And look, there's a six-pointed star. You see the six-pointed star in there? Mm -hmm. That's amazing would ever think there was an equal six-pointed star in a seven-sided form. <laughs> so one of the things I did was I spun this because I went from, from Earth, which is finding out the differences, the earth is all about what's different. Water is about what changes. So only like a change this thing is not strong. What's well, to spin it? And it turned into a bell. The geometry of the bell has never been known. It's all been through trial and error. No, so there's two circles. There's one on the outside and one on the inside. But inside there are black lines. You can see those black lines? Mm -hmm. Can you? Mm -hmm. yeah. I know what those are. I wanted to know what was inside that, that that was going on in there. What is that? What are those black lines? So I objectively found out that inside there, there's this form. <laughs> and if I spin that, look at that inside form. That's beautiful. Look at that. That happens to be the left chamber of the human heart. Okay. Platonic forms, okay? The, the chetahedon fits between these two. This is eight, okay, this is eight side, this is four. And right in between the relationship is the seven. But the seven is not regular. So what is this teaching us? What is, what is going on here with this? What can we learn from this personally? And what we can learn from it is this. We need to be able to work with paradoxes. <laughs> paradoxes is what we got to work on. And what are paradoxes? There are things, okay, well, let's see, what's a paradox? Um, this form, this chestahedron form, is an expanding form. This expands. Okay, none of the platonic forms are expanding. They're contracting. This is expanding. And what I mean by that, expanding, is that you know that the platonic form is opening up. Nobody in the history of 6,000 years of studying these things ever opened one of them up. <laughs> 